Hi, everyone. My name is Dallin Wortham, host of the Charter School Connection podcast. Thank you so much for listening. In this episode, I interview Memory Bender from Elevate Collegiate. She gives a lot of really good advice about how to start a, a school from nothing because that's kind of what she did. She, like a lot of us, found her way into the charter school world after studying something completely different. And she wanted to give the opportunity of education to students in the Houston area that really, really needed a good school near them. We'd like to thank our sponsors, obviously Charter Connect. You plus Charter Connect equals more students. Whether you are in the cycle year after year of struggling to reach enrollment goals and wondering, is this gonna be a good year? Is this gonna be a bad year? Are we gonna have enough students to fill our classrooms? Or if you're doing actually pretty well with enrollment, but you're just looking to stay on top of the rest of your competition, schedule a free marketing consultation with one of our enrollment specialists. We've helped hundreds of charter schools across the country to make enrollment issues a thing of the past. So go ahead and schedule that free marketing consultation by visiting charterconnect.co and our new enrollment software, Enrolio. Enrolio is easy, simple, and it automates your enrollment so that parents and students slip through to your enrollment process and into your school. There's no need to be spending a lot of money for all these really expensive um, enrollment platforms and third-party tools just to lead to disappointing enrollment. So go ahead and go check out Enrolio and schedule your free demo to learn how Enrolio can take your enrollment to the next level. Without further ado, let's get to this podcast episode. Thank you so much, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Dallin Wortham with the Charter School Connection podcast. Um, On this episode, I'm excited because I have a guest um, her name is Memory Bender. I don't know a whole lot about her charter school or about her, but she was really um, eager to accept uh, the invite to tell her story. And every story of anyone who is in the charter school world has a lot of value that we can take from it to make our own charter schools even better. So without further ado, Memory, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on. Um, This is a very rewarding experience. Um, I'm even glad that you reached out to us, to our campus, just to provide this opportunity to us. Um, So yeah, let's get into it. Um, So I am the Dean of Operations for Elevate Collegiate Charter School. Um, We are a small one-off charter, so we don't come from this large conglomerate of charter schools. We don't have a sister charter or anything like that. It's literally just us. We're a small one-off charter. Um, We're in our second year of operation. Um, We're on what you would call a slow growth model, so each year we add a grade. We opened last year with um, pre-K four through second grade. We added third grade this year. So hello, star testing. Um, And then we'll add fourth grade for next year. So we're in the process of enrolling those students now. Um, I've been, I firsthand have a large part in our recruitment efforts, um, whether it's being out in the community, setting up a table, going to different daycares, um, having being a part of school fairs, hosting our own school fairs. Um, For example, tomorrow we're doing um, what you would call open house. Um, Mm -hmm. So we have um, we have it's a community event. We've invited the community to come out. You get to take a tour of our school. We'll have a bounce house. We'll have hot dogs and snowballs (laughs) and different things like that um, for our families just to come get a feel for Elevate. Um, But a little bit about Elevate. So um, myself, I worked alongside with my founder and head of school. Her name is Rebecca Francis Jones um, to actually open Elevate. Um, so we started out, it was just me and her at a small office, um, with a dream of just delivering quality education to the students in the third ward area. Um, we chose third ward specifically because it has the highest, um, education and achievement gap in Houston. And what service would we be doing if we could not help those students to close that gap, right? Um, So we were strategic in choosing our location, um, as well as the students and the demographics that we wanted to serve, um, which lands us here. Like I said, Third Ward has the highest achievement gap, you know, which means that those students are overlooked. You know, the students in this area, education in this area is not 
quality, you know? Um, and most of the students and families in this area who are seeking a quality education, they have to bus their child 20 or 30 miles to the north side of Houston or to the suburbs, you know, different things like that. And that's a disservice and it's unfair to those students who are here. So we wanted to provide high quality education in their backyard. You know, your mom doesn't yeah. have to go. Your mom doesn't have to drive you 40 minutes to get you to school. She can go 10 minutes right down the street, you know, and That's you're fantastic. getting, thank you. And you're there, you're able to get all the things that you need. You know, we really pour into our community. We do a lot of different community outreach and giving back to our community because um, on top of having high achievement gaps in the area that we're in, um, we also have very um a high percentage of low socioeconomic back students with a low socioeconomic background um so with that being said you know our students and our families as a whole they need a lot you know so we partner with a lot of nonprofit organizations to provide those resources um resources to our families, whether it be, hey, this we know a nonprofit who does a food drive every week, or hey, we know a daycare that gives away diapers and wipes every week. You know, we try That's to awesome. be able to be that nucleus for our community o alongside of just being a school, you know? Well, this is, all this information that you're giving is fantastic. I have <laughs> a list of questions and you're just already checking them off. <laughs> you're making my job very easy. Um, so let's, I, before I get into the laundry list of questions, because I just, I want to learn. Yes. But let's, let's kind of rewind. Okay. Like, how did you personally get in the world of education and specifically charter schools? Because I, my wife is a teacher. I, I know a lot of teachers and it's pretty, um, I mean, it, it's a, it's a hard profession. It's a long hours. Um, it's taxing. It's fulfilling, but how did you get into education and then why charter schools? Okay, um, so for me, okay, I went to school for marketing, right? Okay. Um, so I went to school, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna be this great, I love business, I'm gonna be this great marketing guru, right? <laughs> um, so I get my little bachelor's in marketing and I go try to find a job and they're like, oh, we were just looking for someone with 10 years of experience or possibly a master's, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, so at that time, teaching opened its door to me. Um, I received a call um, from my old superintendent at a school that I went to um, for, you know, as my high school. And she's like, Hey, you know, that I went to a very small school. Um, so they were able to kind of like keep up with all their students. Right. Yeah. So she calls me and like, Hey, I see that you've graduated. You know, like, what are you doing? What are you, do you have any plans? And so I'm like, well, I'm just really having a hard time trying to find a job. You know, I went to school for marketing. It's very broad. I don't have the experience. Um, so she's like, well, how do you feel about teaching? And so I'm like, teaching? Like, mm -hmm. I never thought to do that. Like, you know, once I finish school, I'm done with that. Like, I never thought about it or anything. And she's like, well, you know, I think you'd be really good at it. So I'm like, I don't know. So she really believed in me at that time more than I believed in myself. Um, so she, I went through the program. She's like, well, this is what I need you to do. If you're gonna try it, I think you can do it. Let's just give it a try. So at that time, I was living in Mississippi, um, and they had this alternate route certification program, right? So I go through that program to become certified as a teacher. Um, once I become certified as a teacher in the state of Mississippi, I started teaching seventh grade English. Um, I taught seventh grade English for three years while in Mississippi before I... Um, started my master's program towards my MBA. Again, because like I said, um, Dallin, my entire goal was business and marketing and things like that. And I walked into teaching. Again, I'm teaching seventh grade. Uh, I'm like 21 years old. I know nothing about any of this. And I'm like, oh no, I have like, no, 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 no. Um, so then I get into grad school. I'm working on my MBA, concentrating in human resources. Um, I'm in the process of moving. I moved to Houston because I'm like, oh, Houston's, wow. I've done my, my research. Houston's like number four in Fortune 500 companies. And I'm going to go be great. 
Well, guess what happens? I get here and then they tell me, I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm on my master's. I got this, this, this. I was like, oh, well now we need someone with 20 years of experience, right? And the only door that is opening for me is teaching. Like every education job that I would apply for here in Houston, they were like, well, can you start today? Yeah. I'm like, geez. <laughs> So um, I ended up going back into education. Um, I started working in Houston because in Mississippi, I worked for public schools. So I didn't get into charter world. Mississippi is not a, pub, a charter friendly place. Um, so I didn't get into charter world until moving to Houston. And I started working for um, the School of Science and Technology, the Advancement Campus here in Houston. They're a larger charter. I'm not sure if you ever heard of them before. Um, Gotcha. And I loved it. Like, I just love the dynamic. I love like what charter stood for. Um, it was very different than just public school education, even being a public school kid and then working in that system. Um, and I just really loved it. To me, pub charters, I felt like those students were getting like this private school feel for free. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I loved it. So while I was at SST, I taught GT, which is gifted and talented. Um, and I was also the GT coordinator, um, which kind of worked me into my role. Um, so after GT, I worked into federal programming, outreach and engagement, which then in a sense is basically outreach and engagement. What am I doing? Marketing, right? However, it's for a school. So now I'm starting to slowly find my passion because I'm like, wow, I'm in education. I'm starting to love it. I'm liking it. And I get to do some outreach, some engagement, which is basically the marketing pieces and the business pieces, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I did all of that for SST. Um, and then it was time for me to move up, you know, um, they didn't have a spot at the time for me to move up. Um, so I started to seek, you know, employment elsewhere. Um, that's when I was able to link with um, Mrs. Jones, who's the founder here. And I've been here ever since. At that time, she was looking for an ops manager. And I'm like, wait, operations, school? <laughs> like my prayers are answered, you know, like, and when I tell you I love what I do. So now I just, all the business of the school, the day-to-day -day operations, the business pieces, recruitment, enrollment, HR, all of that falls under me. And when I say I love it, I love it. And then I still have the opportunity to really pour into the children. You know what I mean? Um, and that feels good. That's fantastic. And so I think that your story can, at, in regards to how you got to where you are now, a lot of people can relate to because not a lot of people you know, grow up saying, I want to be a charter school, a whatever. Teacher, yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> people kind of fall into this world of charter schools, like you and me and everyone that's in the charter school world, um, because their path kind of led them here. And they just said yes to the, to this path. And now they're here. So it's a rewarding path. It's a fulfilling path. Like you said, you're helping a lot of students that really need, you know, some hope and some love and some extra opportunities that they might not have received. Um, so that's why you created, uh, um, it's Elevate, correct? Yes, Elevate Collegiate. Um, so the collegiate part comes because we, you know, a lot of times, a lot of things with like, um, with YouTube and social media and things like that, you know, a lot of children are really getting away from college, you know? Yeah. I think me and you are part of that same generation where we were taught that you need college. You know what I mean? College is the way to go. And I'm not saying that you can't do it without, but we still want our children. We're still pushing that. Like, yeah. because there's still a world of people who you need education. You know what I mean? You don't have the, and I'm like, you may not be the videographer that will be able to be the YouTube person, you know, or you may not be the, the great sports person. So what else can you use to work for you other than that brain, you know? So we still push, we're collegiate based, like all of our classrooms are named after colleges. If you were to come to our school, we have college flags everywhere. So yeah, we That's really awesome. do push that. Mm -hmm. And so this really rewarding path that you're on, it is full of obstacles. It's not easy to start and run and grow a charter school, but it's, it's very difficult. Yeah. And so what are some challenges that you have encountered and how did you overcome them? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to listen to this episode that are maybe going through the same things that would 
love to hear any sort of advice that you might have. Um, I would say just for one, I would say for me, a lot of the challenges that I encountered, um, you know, like I said, we're not a large charter district, right? We don't have another a sister school, you know? Um, so a lot of opening, we had to, it was a lot of trial and error. You know, we didn't have a person that could tell us, no, you should do it this way. Um, you know, we didn't have a rule book. You know, nobody gave us a, a, a playbook and said, hey, yeah. here's what you need to do, you know? Uh -huh. um, like I said, I originally worked for SST Advancement. When I got there, they were only in year two, so they were still founding. However, they have several other campuses. So anytime they needed something, it's easy to just call the other campus. Hey, can you send this over? We need a copy of it. Hey, can you, can you send a person over to do this? We need someone. And we didn't have that. So we ran into a lot of brick walls. You yeah. know, just from not having that resource and having to figure it out on our own. But now looking back, in a sense, I'm grateful for those moments, even though they were hard. I'm extremely grateful for them because, like, I can pour into someone now, you know, like I can help someone, like you just said, who's in my shoes and tell them the easier way because we didn't know the shortcut. Mm -hmm. So now we can provide the, we can provide the shortcut to someone, you know, because um, it's not easy. And if, trust me, if you can find a shortcut. <laughs> yeah. I, I once saw a quote that said, like, there are no shortcuts in life, but the closest thing to a shortcut in life is listening to the experience of others that have exactly, been Exactly, exactly. Um, so if, because you did do it on your own, um, you had to learn things on your own. What were some things that you're like, man, I wish someone would have told me this. Like if I could go back and tell memory, you know, a few years ago, hey, do this, 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 or avoid this, this. Do you have any examples that you'd like to share? Yes. Prioritize your bucket. Mm. Um, know what's important and what can wait. So, um, and by what, that, I would say anybody in the school world, when I speak in buckets, they kind of know what that means. Like they know what buckets, whether it's enrollment, whether it's PEANS, whether it's the building facility as a whole, having the right amount of technology for your students. Do you have enough desk in the classroom? Um, is the curriculum ordered? What curriculum are you using? Is it aligned to the TEKS, the objectives, you know, different things like that. So really having your buckets in order and prioritizing the things that are in your bucket. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> and, and what buckets would you suggest that people prioritize that maybe they're not prioritizing? You say that people prioritize that they should prioritize and they're not? Correct. Okay. Uh, one thing I would say is driving instruction um, and whatever that looks like to drive instruction. Um, you hear instruction, oh, grades and things of that nature being a priority, but most of the time it's the instruction that's surrounded around testing, you know? Um, and if instruction was being driven from August up until the test, you wouldn't have to, you know, it'd make a difference and it wouldn't be such a big push in February and they're like, oh, test scores are what they need to be yeah. because it wasn't a priority, you know, until the test became a priority. Yeah. Um, so for sure, for me, driving instruction. Um, another thing to me um, also would be buy-in from your families. Um, really having that family involvement, letting them feel like they truly are a part of like the decisions and the school and things like yeah. that. Because if you don't have your family on board, then yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, what are you doing? Who are you doing it for? You know what I mean? We're we're here for you and your children. You know, you we're a school of choice. Charter is a school of choice. You choose to go here. You know, um, and as the school that you've chosen for your child, we need to show you why you chose us. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Rock on. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I feel like a lot of schools struggle with including parents and other family members. Um, making, you know, the community a part of their school. Mm -hmm. You said that you have done some really cool events or are at least planning some cool events with the community. You mentioned snowballs and blow up stuff. And 
Um, so do you have any tips for someone that wants to prioritize, prioritize that, but they don't know how? Yeah, um, for me, it just starts with the community. Literally, um, like I said, I went to school for marketing, so I don't mind like getting out and talking to yeah. people and truly getting out into the community. Like um, our first, before we opened last year, before we opened our doors, I went out into my into the neighborhood that we're in. And I literally knocked on doors and handed out flyers for our school. So I know it seems a little archaic, but it is those type of touch points that your parents buy into you know they're like wow the school administrator is at my door like come to like come to my school like I, I want you here you know and that's where that buy-in comes from you know um I'm answering the phone at any time most mm -hmm. people at most schools you can't even get in touch with the director of the dean of operations not a parent you know what I mean like uh -huh. but I am so closely connected to them yeah that's fantastic I love that um yeah, I feel like it's pretty easy to overcomplicate. And I like what you just said. So really cool. And I really want to ask this question. You mentioned that your school is growing, that you're offering new grades and things yeah. of that nature. So in two, three, five years from now, where's Elevate Collegiate going to be? And like, what, what goals are y'all working on? Um, so um, by year 2025, we'll be fully founded. Um, as I stated, we are in a slow growth model, so we're adding a grade each year. Our goal is to get to fifth grade. Um, once we are fully founded with that one campus, um, we will roll out a year fully founded until we like, um, we don't want to add too much because we've noticed um, what happens in a lot of the charter worlds, they grow kind of fast and then they lose themselves. Yeah. Um, so our goal is to really perfect the craft, if that makes sense. Like, we really want that one campus like to be the best that it can be before we even attempt to expand. I think that's fantastic. There's so many times where the, the wagon gets in front of the horse. And, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. and, and then charter schools, they're not really in control. Their goals and their um, the debt that they've accumulated and things like mm -hmm. that. Increasing vanity metrics, those metrics are in control of them instead of them in control. Exactly, of exactly. So I think that's awesome. Well, <laughs> you are, you're killing it. You're giving me some home run dingers. Um, Memory, before we wrap up, um, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Any stories, any advice, anything that you'd like for maybe our little charter school community to be able to know? Continue to do the work that you're doing. Um, I know that it's hard and sometimes you feel, you know, I often question, am I doing the right thing? Sometimes I joke and I ask myself, whose idea was it to open a school? Like, what was I thinking, you know? Uh -huh. um, but just continue to do what you're doing. The work pays off in the end and the reward is always greater at the end. Um, just being able to see, you know, like sometimes it's, it's like I say, it's those bittersweet moments that, I walk in my kindergarten classes and they're reading, you know, yeah. and it's like, this is what made it all worth it, uh -huh. you know? So. Fantastic. That, I, I think that's a great way to wrap up. Um, <laughs> you're very, you're a very good public speaker, by the way. Um, yeah. I, I feel like. <laughs> Thank you. Like I'm stuttering and I'm saying, um, um, um. <laughs> And you, you can just and rip. usually and look usually I'm always um because I'm country I'm from Mississippi so I have an <laughs> accent right and uh -huh. usually I'm like oh lord I hope they can understand me <laughs> <laughs> no I I think we understood you great and I think the concepts that you share are very important to understand so thanks so much for um taking the time out of your busy day you probably have so much on your plate and just to share this with us um we'll be posting this to YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be linking to Elevate Collegiate so that you can go to their website, check them out. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for your time. I'm memory. excited. Thank you. I mean, thanks for reaching out to us. May I ask, how did you find us? <laughs> Our outreach team, they're pretty good. Great. Oh, right. Okay, cool. And you guys, where are you guys located? Uh, we're all over. So Charter Connect is uh, enrollment boosting uh, agency to help charter schools boost their enrollment via digital marketing and so we have members all over the country that work virtually and um 
we said, you know what, we're not really doing charter schools justice unless we grab their stories and share their stories. And so that's why we have this podcast. And so thank that's you so awesome. much. Awesome. I think you guys are doing some cool stuff. That's why when you reached out, I'm like, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much. All righty then. Thank you. It was nice chatting with you. Then we'll stay in touch. And uh, All right, everyone, anytime, anytime. <laughs> so everyone listening to this podcast, go check out uh, Elevate uh, Collegiate. And thank you so much. Bye now. Cool. Thank you. Have an awesome weekend.